setting in. The sun is up. It's early in the morning for me. And uh, believe it or not, it's one of my favourite times of the day, early in the morning before everything gets going. It's all peaceful. And uh, I often like to come out here in my garden, sit and eat breakfast. And our story today is all about the time that Jesus' friend had breakfast with him in a very special moment. And we're continuing in our theme for the year um, today of, of God moving in our midst. It's a bit of a refresher. We want to highlight the idea this year that everywhere we go, God is with us. He's here with us, moving in our midst, living alongside us and in our hearts. Not just when we're at a messy church. Um, so this month, I thought summer holidays, we're all maybe going to go and do summer activities. Let's have a story about when Jesus was at the beach with his friends. Um, and actually it starts with a bit of a sadder introduction because you know, Jesus had a friend called Peter. He promised Jesus he would never leave him. And Jesus said to him that day, three times Peter, you're going to tell people you don't even know who I am. He said, no, I promise and I'll never leave you. But he did. And when he died on the cross, all his friends left him. They all ran off and left him all alone. But Peter didn't just leave him. When he was there watching Jesus and the bad things that were happening to him, some people recognised him. And Peter said to them, no, I don't know him. I don't know that man. They said, yes, you know him. You were his friend. You were with him the whole time. Peter said, no, no, I don't. I have no idea who he is. I've never seen him in my life. And he did that three times. He told people around him that he didn't even know who Jesus was. His best friend who he'd lived with for many years. And he abandoned him and he left him. And Peter, before he met Jesus, was a fisherman. So when Jesus had died, Peter didn't know what else to do. He went back to fishing on his boat. And he'd heard rumours about the fact that maybe Jesus is alive again or been resurrected but he thought well if Jesus is back he probably doesn't want to see me because I abandoned him and he knew I would and this day Peter had been fishing all night long with his friends and they caught no fish and on the way back in they saw someone on the shore shouting they said have you caught any fish friend and they said no we haven't caught any fish and then the, the person on the shore said well you should try putting your nets on the other side right hand side of the boat and they thought, well, what difference is that going to make? But out of respect to this person, they put their nets on the other side. And would you believe it? They couldn't pull their nets in because they were so full of fish. It's been a miracle. They fished all night with nothing. Suddenly this person tells them to put them on the other side. They put their nets in and they're full to the brim of fish. They couldn't pull them in. It was so heavy. They had to call their other friend's boat over. And so one of his, Peter's friends said, look, um, it must be Jesus. It's Jesus. So Peter put his jacket on, jumped in the water and started running towards the shore. I don't know why he put his jacket on, it seems a strange thing to do, but that's what it says. When he got to the shore, Jesus, it was Jesus, had a fire going, some fish cooking, and he said to Peter, bring some of the fish you've caught so we can eat together. So Peter grabbed some of the fish, he helped his friends pull the nets in onto the shore, they all sat around the fire and had some breakfast all together. Now, I don't imagine it was as peaceful as this because there was 150 fish they caught, and I'm sure they were all very excited by what Jesus had done. Well, they sat down they had a chat and as part of that discussion Jesus said to Peter, Peter do you love me? And Peter said yes Jesus you know that I love you. He said I want you to feed my lambs. And then Jesus asked him again, Peter do you love me? Peter said yeah, yes Lord you know that I love you. Take care of my sheep, Jesus said. And then Jesus asked Peter a third time, Peter do you love me? Now Peter was a bit upset now, he's asked him three times. He started to think, maybe Jesus doesn't believe me. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. And then he talked to Peter about the fact that his life is going to be a bit more difficult now that he's chosen to follow Jesus properly. And at the end of this discussion, he said to Peter, will you follow me? And Peter did follow Jesus the rest of his life. He never, ever abandoned him again. He stuck to what Jesus asked him to do because Jesus gave him a second chance. He told people he didn't know him three times, so Jesus asked him three times, do you love me, do you love me, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, I do. Because Jesus gives us a chance to make up for where we've gone wrong. When he died on the cross, he took all the punishment away, the things we've done. And we don't have to be afraid, we don't have to be worried that he doesn't love us or care about us. It doesn't matter what we've done, Jesus always wants us to be his friend, and he'll always give us another chance to make it right with him. So wherever we go, he's there with us. As we go to the beach over the summer, he'll be there. As we're at home, he'll be there. As we look forward to new schools and the new term, he'll be with us. 
we can always feel welcome to follow Jesus because he has made a way for every one of us. So we're going to sing our song again, Waymaker. Let's praise God together. Jesus is the way maker. He's made a way for us to be God's friends and to live with him forever. And we can always feel welcome to follow him, no matter what we've done, no matter who we are, no matter what has happened to us. We've got some ideas of things you can make this month, as we always have, and we thought we'd show you them here as part of this video. Lots of fish ideas this one, because of that amazing mir miracle that Jesus did in making those fish just come from nowhere. After they fished all night, there was nothing. He put them on the other side, Jesus said, and sure enough, more than 150 fish they caught that day. So, make yourself an origami fish. There's a video on our Facebook page. There's also a link in the description of this video to all the instructions that you'll need to make all the suggestions we've got. Our origami fish looks something like this. Have a go and send us a picture if you manage to complete it. It's quite tricky on that one. Another fish idea for you, if you've got some felt at home, have a go at making a felt fish. Cut two fish shapes out, put them together and sew around the edge. Put some stuff in inside and make a felt fish to remind you of the fact that Jesus can do anything. Or you can make an edible fish, find yourself a nice big square cake, 
and some fish sweeties, stick them on the top. Tell yourself, tell each other the story as you enjoy eating those cakes <coughs> all together. Forgiveness is a large part of the story today. So we found online a lovely forgiveness prayer and we've made use of it, putting it on a heart shape and creating something you can decorate your home with to remind you of forgiveness. Create yourself a forgiveness prayer heart and hang it up around your home. If you've got some kitchen sponges, some straws, and little bits of paper, you can make yourself some sponge sailboats that look like this and think about how tricky it was for them to pull those fish in onto the boat and drag them onto the shore as well. As they had to fish in all night long and being probably quite tired. The last idea we had is of making up a nice beach scene as they sat together and ate their breakfast on the beach with Jesus. Make that scene and put it up somewhere around your home to remind you of this wonderful story of Jesus being on the beach with his friends, eating breakfast and making sure they all knew that he loved them so much and he forgave them for letting him down when they did. Those are all our ideas. You can find the instructions, as I said, on the link in the description of this video. And we hope you really enjoy getting together around this story, talking it through, thinking it through and making those things to celebrate Jesus and the forgiveness that he offers us. That is all we've got in store for August Messy Church. We hope to do something in real life in September. Stay tuned, keep an eye on our Facebook page to keep up to date with what we're doing. And if we don't see you then, we hope to see you again soon. But for this month, enjoy the sun, have a wonderful time off of school. And know that next month when we go back to school, Jesus is with you. Bye everybody. <laughs>